Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video that I shot with Ben from 3DXR. Now 3DXR are stockers of all of the high-end equipment needed for professional and prosumer drone builds, both for quadcopters, fixed wings and also VTOLs as well. Now I'm lucky I get to go up there once every couple of months and I also get a chance then to pick Ben's brains for those questions I get from people like you that are interested in this stuff. And there's been lots of interest about auto landing, about how you do that with RD Pilot. RD Pilot is very capable of actually bringing a fixed wing into landing very gracefully. In fact, it can do it better than I can. However, there are some tips and tricks. Now, this is the second of three videos. The first video was one where Ben showed how to connect and configure a LiDAR in the belly of your fixed wing. This one is going to be more about how you set up a basic mission with or without LiDAR. The final one is then actually going to be about the specific things you can do to make sure that the auto landing uses a LiDAR, but also things like setting up your flare, etc. So if you are not interested in LiDAR and just interested in auto landing, you're in the right place. However, I'll put links to all three videos down below if there's a particular thing that you're interested in. But if you want to know all about this, I'd recommend watch all three in series. And at the end, you'll be a bit of an expert. So with that said, I'll hand over to Ben, who can show us how to create a mission and something called do land start, which is the way that we can configure it to do a nice automated landing at the end of a mission or in the event of a fail safe. Okay, so we're connected to Mission Planner here. Um, we've just got our demo flight controller. We're connected to a plane, and we're going to show you the process of um, using do land start. So what is it first? So we're all connected here. It is a plane, not a VTOL or a copter. And um, we're just going to search RTL. So one parameter I made an adjustment to is this RTL auto land parameter. And what this is going to do is um, we're going to change this to the, the one I like to use. So number two is go directly to landing sequence. You could make it fly home and then to land. So if the most likely scenario is you've lost signal, it might be that just getting the aircraft towards you, then trying to regain control before it goes to a landing sequence is more desirable. Um, it could be that your landing sequence starts far away due to the size of the aircraft and the uh, space requirements. But I'm just going to select RTL option 2 and um, go directly to landing sequence. So write those parameters. Next, let's have a little look at planning the actual sequence. So we've set um, a home point. So I can right click, set home here. Or if you were connected to your vehicle and it had GPS, it would sort of update with your current location. Um, this is just a random field somewhere near the coast and let's imagine we're going to fly out to sea and um, do some manual flying and we let's say we hit some sort of RTL issue some sort of signal loss it's triggered a fail safe we want this aircraft to come back and land so in this example let's assume we've took off towards the sea into the wind and we want to then land in this field here and we want to land into the direction of the wind now this is a, a big field um, loads of room, not too many sort of obstacles. So let's have a look how we might want to set up this, this mission. So let me just um, click once to imagine we're flying over here. And the importance of this is to have this next command, which is do land start. So I need to add this command into our list of items. Um, so let's see if I clicked here, as a waypoint, I can change this by using the arrow to do do land start. So let's just have a little look around. There we go, do land start. And then it's now do land start. I could also do another method, which is we've got a waypoint. I can click add below, and then I can say do land start. There we go. And then I can start clicking like a mission. Um, let's have a look at what's happened here. So do land start doesn't have a latitude or longitude or a height. So it, it, isn't an, it isn't a waypoint in sort of space. It is simply a marker in the list. And what happens is when this um, fail safe events happens or when you press RTL on a switch, it looks through your mission and it is looking for a do land start. When it finds a do land start, it will then carry out what is below it. So that's the idea. It's a marker in a mission. 
and if you've hit RTL or failsafe, it will carry out what's below that. So this is where we're doing a landing sequence. You could just look at this as a mini mission. So let's have a little look here. This flight controller was set up for a, um, a larger plane. So we're seeing um, this large circle here. That's just our radius. So let's ignore that and look at the height. So 100 meters now. Let's imagine we're just flying a smaller aircraft. So let's just say we never get that high. We, we only get the 50 meters. Um, so I can go in here and let's just say um, the height is um, 50 meters here. And for simplicity, I'm going to show you a very quick way to do this. Let's say I wanted to, wanted to go around like this. Then it's going to come here. And then we're going to land sort of in this bit of the field. So what I've done here, we've got 50 meters. Let's just, for the sake of a demo, let's just say we go to 40 meters and 30 meters. So I've been able to adjust the height of these waypoints by clicking under the Alt and changing it. So we've got 50, 40, 30. So what's happening here is it's going to be about 50 meters here. It's going to lose some altitude towards this waypoint. It's going to make its turn. It's going to lose altitude on the way to this one. So from 30 meters, and then we're going to right click somewhere near home. And we're going to click land. I can sort of drag this around as to where I want it to land. Um, obviously don't aim it at you. So the land height uh, always just defaults it to one. So what would happen is it's very important that you have this waypoint before land. Um, and this is where it starts to behave slightly differently. So we've got a height of 30 meters and then we're going forward to land there so we can have a look at our sort of angles and gradients here this is where you can run into limitations of your aircraft um, if it's a uh, you know if it glides a lot if it's very hard to get it to the ground so choosing the distance between these is is very important so if it was at 30 meters altitude how much room does it need to to sort of come down now there is quite a lot of other parameters that affect how it behaves on this landing sequence so it would be advisable to have an airspeed sensor if you want to optimize um, automatic landing because you have more control in um, the stages of landing so you can actually reduce the target airspeed as it comes in for landing so you have a landing airspeed you have a pre-flare airspeed the other thing that makes a big difference is um, detecting the height of the ground for when it's going to do its flares. Now, your height by default will be from your barometer, it could be from your GPS, but um, it's also sort of relative to where you took off from. Now, a incorrect estimation of height can give a huge horizontal difference. So it, just for example, if it was a one in 10 glide slope and you're out by a meter, you know, you could be sort of going 10 meters forward. And that is like a best case scenario because um, fields aren't necessarily always flat. It could slope away from you, it could slope up. Um, the longer you fly an aircraft, the more drift you get. If you've launched it from your hand, you could actually have a sort of, you know, two meter offset in where it thinks the home altitude is. So there's quite a lot of factors that will affect where it positions itself on a landing if you you know if it's a very if it's a glider it's a very light aircraft that floats um, but there is also many parameters where you can force it down so as it goes as it approaches this waypoint how aggressively it pushes it to the ground and um, so by controlling this controlling the pitch parameters on landing so there is loads and loads of ways to improve this accuracy but what this will do is it will put you in about the right area and it's controlled the direction you approach the height you approach um, so let's just look at these parameters again before I go into explain a little bit more about how it behaves um, and what you must be careful of when you do these parameters so what we've simply got here we've got an invisible parameter we've got an invisible waypoint which is called dual and start this is a marker it's a marker in a mission that when a failsafe event like an RTL is triggered um, it will look for this marker and it will carry out what is below. So in this case on the screen, if you can see, we've got do land start as item two. We don't have to be in a mission. This can just happen, you know, you don't even need any other mission items on here. It can just simply have do land start and then landing sequence. So it's gonna do its RTL. Um, it's found do land start, so it instantly heads to waypoint three in this case. So it would head to a height of 50 meters to waypoint three. So you turn a red. Now this is where you must be cautious because depending on where you are, it's gonna turn and face this waypoint. It's gonna go straight at it. 
So if you are at 100 meters, it will fly diagonally towards this. Um, there's also some little caveats that if you were very close to this, but it needed to make a height adjustment, it could circle up or down depending on your sort of waypoint radiuses and how quick the aircraft is able to lose height. So there's some behaviors you need to be aware, aware about when planning a mission like this. The main one is being cautious of where this first waypoint is and if, if it approaches it because you've lost signal, which is there an obstacle it could hit because it's RTL'd from behind, say, uh, a pylon, it's RTL'd from, you know, TV mast or there's a hill so you must be very careful about can this can this plane be anywhere and fly diagonally to this waypoint and not hit anything that would be my primary concern and also quite often um, on the sort of larger aircraft we do the tree lines around most fields could be you know 20 meters could be even higher so that is a, a big consideration as to doing the sort of approach angles where your turns are what are these heights so ideally for us this 30 meter waypoint wants to be in um, you know clear open ground where it's not gonna it's not gonna be anywhere near a tree or and it's got a good level ground to, to land on there is more advanced features you can do so for the people um, that sort of have permission to fly further and and do are doing more advanced um, things with drones with BV loss trials or whatever um, you can have multiple do land starts and the behavior is that it will go to the closest one what I do myself is on my regular flying sites, I will basically have saved some of these landing patterns. So you can save this to your desktop as a text file. And we, what you might do is, okay, um, in normal conditions, the wind's coming south. I want to I wanna use this landing pattern. So I could save this to file. And let's call it the uh, uh, southern wind landing circuit. I could also do these for various other wind conditions. So if I wanted to land to the east or west and have them saved. Um, the downside to this method, um, which maybe, you know, it is an essential thing to do, is you need the map um, and you sort of have to have loaded this data and the terrain data. So planning a mission like this on an unconnected laptop, unconnected from the internet laptop in a hotel room before a job, um, you've got to bear those things in mind that you, you do need the mapping data and um, you do want height data in order to to plot these missions. So this is the uh, simple summary of what is the minimum requirement in order to perform an auto land. So to summarize, we've got a do land start as a mission item. This is a marker. It is not a place the drone is going to fly to. The drone in the event of a fail safe or an RTL will look for this marker and carry out the mission below. In this case, we've plotted three waypoints to reduce the height. So we've gone 30 meters, 40, 50, uh, 50 meters, 40 meters, then down to 30. And after 30 meters, we then point into the wind and we've got our land command. Um, and we must be cautious here to get this um, at, a, at a realistic glide slope that the aircraft can actually come down at and land in this distance. It's important to have this waypoint before land. 30 meters is a good number. Um, and that is because it will then carry out various actions such as slowing down if you've got airspeed and it will also flare where you have parameters to control these flaring heights and flaring speeds. Um, so this last parameter is important. Um, the reason why we've not just done a land command is to position it and to steadily reduce the height so we can be at a sort of favorable height and direction for landing. So those are the sort of main components of, a, of the do land start mission in order to carry out an autonomous landing. In future videos, we'll look at how to optimize this landing with external sensors and also tuning some settings of the aircraft and adjusting some parameters in order to improve the accuracy of an automatic landing. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.